I'm Alex Busby, and today I have with me my good friend and former flute professor, Cheryl Goodnight, and we're here to talk to you about our five tips for memorization. So, why is it important as a performer to be able to memorize? First thing I want to mention, uh, well, I memorize, first of all, I'm legally blind. I have a connect condition of the retina known as retinitis pigmentosa and it's a lack of peripheral vision so therefore it's difficult to uh, keep the music flowing if I'm trying to read across the page because I see straight ahead. So with memorization I've done this for at least 40 years and um, I uh, first of all feel it's important to memorize because first of all you're not buried in the score with your head or your eyes or your body and also it gives you freedom and flexibility, express your emotions, and express the meaning and the intent of what the composer intended in his musical writing. Well, for sure. We had mentioned earlier that uh, the fact that music itself, when written, is just black ink on white paper, and it can't show emotion. And so being able to get away from watching the music is a way that uh, we can better reflect our emotions through our playing. That's very true because with it just being black and white on the paper, that's just like reading word by word or pecking on a typewriter or on the computer and we're looking for atmosphere and expression. Absolutely. And really uh, getting away from the music can help create a different audience. As well and uh, also with the getting away from the music, it uh, helps with your uh, posture a little bit better and that's very important in your breath support as a flutist or any wind player. Awesome. So starting with our five tips for memorization. Number one would be figure out the musical structure and, and uh, form. Okay. Uh, this deals with uh, what we all learned in music theory and analysis which is very very important and it is such a useful tool. People need to realize that how that's going to be a benefit to you in the future when you uh, get out in the real world as a musician. So what we do is we look at the overall form. Is it sonata allegro form? Or is it ternary form? Or is it through composed or free form? And we look at the various uh, key areas such as the tonic key for the A theme, uh, the dominant key for the B theme, and we look at where the exposition ends when it's in sonata allegro form. We look at the development and see the various keys that it modulates in and uh, what does he do with the melodies? Does he uh, extend uh, those melodies in terms of uh, the new key areas or do they um, just have fragments of the themes in the uh, development? And we also study the ex sorry, the recapitulation where the A and B themes return and the second time the B theme may be a little bit different and we also look for the coda. Um, also, we want to uh, look at the various patterns. Does it use scales? Does it use arpeggios? Does it use thirds? Um, do we uh, use contrary motion, oblique motion, parallel motion? All of that. And you want to study the intermelodic relationships as well in each little sequence of the pieces. And you mentioned uh, when looking at uh, the musical structure and form that you can even, you sometimes count the measures. Right. For instance, if there's a little pattern, like, uh, uh, for instance, in the Prokofiev uh, flute sonata, um, you might count measures or count how many times the little pattern is done. You might one in, two in, one in, two, three in, one, da da da, ba da da. Instead of counting measures, you could just count how many times the pattern's done. Or, for instance, in some uh, orchestral literature where you just have a single note maybe playing the root of the chord. Two. That's uh, four times that it did it. And uh, you would know that it's going to play that D for four measures. Awesome. Yeah. So you'd like one, rest, two, rest, three, rest, four, rest, or one, two, 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 three, two, four, two. And I use my fingers, as you can see, to count those measures as well. Absolutely. And something to keep in mind is when you're studying the form is, especially when you go back to the A theme, uh, if it's ABA, 
is to find what's different. It's not just to, to go, oh, well, I'm back to the eighth thing, but to make sure that you're paying attention to the details and that you're finding what's different each time within the form. Right. So our tip number two is how do rehearsals letters then, uh, how do they relate to the form and structure? Okay, this is very, very helpful and you think, oh, those rehearsal letters, they're just there so we'll know where to start and stop in rehearsals. Well, they're actually uh, very helpful in um, discerning which sections are which. Like for instance, uh, rehearsal letters A, B, and C, and D make up the exposition of say the concerto or the sonata part of the symphony. It's an allegro part in the, I say, a Beethoven symphony or a Mozart symphony. And uh, also those rehearsal letters might uh, contain rests and uh, there may be large chunks of rests such as like eight bars rest or 10 bars rest. So what you need to do is to know what is going on during those rests. In other words, it's very important to know the other parts that you're playing with, whether it's a large symphony or whether it's a wind ensemble or a woodwind quintet an ensemble, whatever. So if you know that, you'll know uh, what is um, involved while you're resting and uh, you can uh, be fascinated with uh, what the other sections are doing and it helps you understand also the overall phrase structure. Like for instance, an eight bar rest might be an eight bar phrase and then you come in right after that eight bar phrase. And also in the rehearsal letters, when uh, you have say like what I just demonstrated, like a D for the downbeat of four bars, you might just be playing the root of a chord while somebody else is playing a melodic pattern underneath you. So you do need to understand what's going on all around you, whether it's above you, below you, and on either side of you in terms of the phrase structure and the overall musical structure. Awesome. And that brought us to our third point. Uh, or third tip, which is know what's going on around you and in the rests. Uh, it's important to know, you know, what you're listening for before you enter as well as what you're listening for once you do enter. And as you mentioned, know what's above you, uh, below you, uh, what's melodic material and what's harmonic material, uh, and knowing that. So tip three was know what's happening while you're resting. Correct. And also that may also affect your um, entrances because you may come in on an upbeat and uh, say uh, a clarinet is playing something on the downbeat of one and the downbeat of two and you come in on the upbeat of two so you've got to be ready set and go so in other words know their part and always breathe um, not just a half a beat before you come in but breathe say uh, one or two beats even so that you know when you come in on that upbeat that you're nailing it right awesome and number four, or our tip number four, is listen to the conductor's breath as well as musicians around you. Right, and that also helps with uh, entrances, and especially when um, there's a whole rest of silence. And not only do you feel the ambiance that we mentioned earlier, but you feel the emotions that you and the musicians around you are feeling. And all of a sudden, for instance, if it's something uh, very, uh, very, very sad, or very, very somber. You can, you know. So you let you listen uh, to the um, overall mood that is surrounding you as well, and that helps also coordinate uh, the entrance as well, and uh, it keeps you together as a woodwind section as a group within an ensemble. Absolutely. Yeah, breaths definitely convey style. Our tip number five and our final tip for the day is practice. And not only practice, but practice uh, in sections and being able to recognize whether it's a scale pattern or arpeggio pattern, etc. Okay, also practice, practice, practice. Um, this is very, very important because as musicians, so much that what we do is repetitive mm -hmm. and it takes repetition to be a part of us. It needs to be a part of our mind, our body, and our soul. And our um, practicing needs to involve being to able to go from one section to the other freely, let it flow, uh, whether it makes good rhythmic, very good melodic sense. Uh, because when you go to your first rehearsal, you're expected 
to be able to play through the whole piece. And I find it very beneficial, um, regardless of what um, instrumental genre it might be or what ensemble combination. I uh, practice particularly uh, orchestral music with professional recordings so that I get used to flowing from one phrase to the next phrase, one small section to the next section, one large section to the next section, and then eventually we have the whole entire movement or the whole entire piece ready to go so that we can walk in that first rehearsal and play the piece. Right. And you had mentioned uh, not developing the bad habit of starting and stopping and starting and stopping, but rather uh, while we work to be technically accurate with smaller sections, be sure that you practice as a whole or even if you're working at uh, rehearsal letter D, make sure you're also combining it with C and E. Correct. It's a good idea to go back to C and let it get into D and get out of D and on in to E. Hmm. Absolutely. So our five tips uh, for memorization we'll summarize are number one, figure out the musical structure and form. Number two, uh, how can you relate rehearsal numbers and or letters uh, to, uh, to the phrase and structures? Number three, know what's happening in the rests. Number four, listen to the, the breathing and the breaths that convey emotion around you both from the conductor and uh, your fellow musicians. And number five, practice. Practice both um, sectionally and through the entire piece. That's it. Awesome. That should cover everything thoroughly. For sure. Thanks so much for watching. Again, this has been Alex Busby with my friend and flute professor Cheryl Goodnight sharing a few tips on memorization. I hope this will be of help to somebody down the line. Absolutely.